town which is uh, known for the birthplace of radio uh, because uh, this gentleman uh, Marconi uh, who is uh, being credited for the invention of radio uh, rather than our uh, professor Jagdish Chandra Basu who could not you know register his invention and it's been credited to Marconi so Marconi he established the first wireless factory in uh, 1899 in Chelmsford and in Essex. So that's probably the significance of uh, the town Chelmsford. And now uh, I think uh, being St. Andrew's Center for Plastic Surgery, that is the, the biggest landmark in that uh, you know, town. And this town is about 50 miles east of uh, London, so very well connected to uh, London. Uh, we're talking about the breast cancer and the breast, though, uh, so the significance. Uh, we all know that the breast is the symbol of femininity and the uh, motherhood. Uh, this is a, a picture of uh, uh, Bani Thaniji, you know, which is being you know, uh, uh, done by a local artist. Uh, and I always use this picture of femininity in my presentation. So a woman diagnosed with the cancer breast uh, they always live with, you know, uh, raising emotions uh, with the loss of breast, fear of death, uh, recurrence of the cancer and loss of femininity. And there's always a desire when she sits in front of the mirror that she should return to the normal. That is the dream a woman uh, with uh, breast cancer is. That's what she all the time think about. <coughs> now, talking about the breast cancer scenario uh, in the world, you know, it's the most common cancer uh, in females. Uh, 16.7 lakh new cancers are diagnosed uh, in, a, in a year, and 25% of all cancers is breast cancer. Uh, one in eight women worldwide is the, is the incidence. You know. And if we talk about India, then about 1.5 lakh new breast cancers are uh, diagnosed every year. And uh, we register 70,000 deaths annually, uh, which is about 10% of the total cancer deaths. So that's the severity of the uh, problem. Uh, breast cancer in England, again, it's uh, most common cancer in women. One in nine women is the, uh, in, in their lifetime, you know, they are diagnosed with uh, breast cancer. Uh, 40 to 41,000 new cases per year, 11,000 deaths per year. Even in, you know, so-called developing country, developed country. And this incidence is rising even in the uh, young age group. Although we have got all sort of awareness programs, you know, uh, available for the uh, public. So, uh, how do the patients present, like uh, anywhere else, they are symptomatic presentations or uh, they are being, you know, diagnosed at the time of screening. Uh, symptoms, we all know, uh, painless, palpable lump, indentation, dimpling, change in the shape, breast asymmetry, ulcer, changes in the nipple uh, in the form of ulcer, eczema, uh, retraction, uh, blood discharge, and uh, lump in the axilla. <coughs> now, early detection. Uh, that is the key uh, that alters the course of the whole disease. Because if there is uh, early detection, uh, we get early intervention. And the cancers detected by screening are always smaller and mastectomy is less likely to back to those cases. So uh, the treatment is less severe. Self examination of the breast, uh, again, you know, uh, that uh, uh, all the women in this age should uh, know, and that's the key. Uh, for early detection, and in UK we have got the NHS breast screening uh, program. So what happens there? All the women uh, in the age group of 40 to 70 years, they are invited uh, every three years in the breast assessment clinics. And what happens in the clinics? Uh, they undergo triple assessment. Uh, I'm sure you know here also we have that kind of diagnostic system. And, uh, so uh, the triple assessment is clinical examination, radiology, mammogram, sonography and then if needed biopsy in the form of FNSE and uh, core biopsy. Uh, the good thing is uh, that we are, we, there we have got about 70% uh, uptake of uh, this facility, so 70% of the women who are invited and they come about the uh, screening. Uh, mammography can detect breast cancer approximately two years before it becomes clinically apparent, so uh, that is the uh, significance. Uh, breast screening, 5% of the women uh, after the screening uh, will be called uh, recalled and 3 fourth of the women recalled have further imaging examination and then they will be discharged. So only one fourth will have a needle biopsy 
and 6 out of 1,000 uh, will have a cancer diagnosis. So UK screening program, uh, we are predicting uh, that should have reduced mortality of the breast cancer by 25%, which is, which is pretty effective uh, uh, program. Uh, high risk screenings, uh, those who are high risk, moderate to high risk, uh, they are invited for annual mammography for over uh, 40 years. And BRCA P53 uh, uh, positive uh, carriers, they have got the annual uh, MRIs from the age of 20. So, uh, and histology, we all know, you know, what we get is invasive ductal, uh, invasive labular, or the carcinoma uh, situ. Uh, what if it is cancer uh, diagnosed in the screening, then the patients are seen again in one week's time. Uh, they are seen by the surgeons and the breast care nurses and the diagnosis was given to, diagnosis was given to them. And then a plan is, treatment plan is formulated. For that, we have got the MDMs, multidisciplinary uh, meetings, uh, which takes place, you know, every uh, week. Uh, and the, all the specialists who are involved in the treatment of the patient, they are all there uh, at one, uh, uh, under one group. So pathologists, radiologists, oncologists, oncosurgeons, plastic surgeons, and the breast care nurses. All of them are there so that we can make the, uh, the discussion and a concession, consensus is reached. Uh, treatment option, uh, we all know that uh, surgery, uh, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, hormonal therapy, and combination of therapy are the treatment options for the kind of cancer. Uh, I will be talking about the surgery. So surgery is uh, uh, tumor removal, uh, which is the uh, uh, breast conservation surgery uh, associated with the, uh, you know, plus or minus radiotherapy. And mastectomy, about 55 to 60 percent of the patients uh, were diagnosed with the breast cancer. They had to mastectomy. And of course, uh, uh, reconstruction is uh, done by the own plastic team. Uh, axillary staging is another, you know, uh, surgical procedure, so, which I'm not going to go into the detail. Uh, breast conserving surgery, uh, wide local excisions. Uh, it basically depends on the nature, uh, size, and location of the tumor. And the size of breast is also important to uh, make that kind of procedure. So wide local excisions, they are quick. Uh, they preserve the, uh, you know, structure of the breast. They always need to be the pain. So they are the easiest options. And uh, then the other procedures are mammoplasty techniques, uh, uh, which uh, uses, you know, breast protection uh, principles. So uh, in this wise pattern diagram, uh, you see, if the tumors are located uh, in these areas, uh, then the mammoplasty technique can easily, you know, uh, uh, apply. And uh, uh, this part of the breast, you know, which is within the vice pattern, uh, other than the uh, pedicle, uh, which is there, so anything located in this area that can be uh, easily taken away as the uh, reduction and specimen. And uh, so this is how the these parts come out and then these pillars, they are wrapped around the uh, pedicle. Uh, we can, uh, can pan the pedicle depending on the uh, location of the tumor. So the pedicle can be inferior, superior, superior medial, and there can be extended pedicle there. And the breast can be reshaped, although you get the smaller size of the breast, so you have to do reduction on the other side to get symmetry. And this is this is how you know the remaining breast uh, pillars they are wrapped around the uh, uh, pedicle, and uh, that forms the uh, breast cone. And you can see uh, in this picture that this lady has the totic breast, and the tumor was diagnosed. More plastic technique was used. The tumor was remo removed, and she got a nice you know breast reduction. Uh, so smaller breast, nipple at a at a right position. So it's kind of, you know, the cosmetic uh, construction as well. But the drawbacks for the breast conservation is that sometimes, you know, uh, you end up having this kind of, you know, scars, treating scars, depressed scars, uh, asymmetry. And uh, then uh, there are chances of, uh, high chances of the local failure and uh, recurrence. And uh, definitely, you know, we don't like the breast, breast deformities, uh, which uh, we get out of this because, you know, these deformities are very difficult to treat as well because these patients get radiotherapy. And radio, treating radiotherapy or doing any cosmetic surgery is a very, very daunting task. So,
so that is the drawback of that preservation so the next thing is uh, mastectomy which is the uh, complete removal of the breast with the tumor and there are definite indications so large cancers in the small breast multifocal disease those who are unwilling to radiotherapy uh, they are subjected to to removal of the breast uh, failed conservation surgery recurrence of the breast cancer and the most important thing is the patient choice because ultimately it is patient's choice which uh, matters and of course uh, now we are doing more and more uh, risk reduction surgeries for the uh, family history and gene variants so in those cases we do uh, mastectomy so these are certain indications for the mastectomy now mastectomy can be simple mastectomy uh, where all the breast tissue and uh, uh, tumor and skin is removed and patient is left with the uh, flat chest with the scars which are transverse or oblique scars on the breast the good thing is it gives good local so about 55 to 60% of the patients uh, they go for uh, mastectomy uh the mastectomy that was the simple mastectomy and now that we are doing reconstructions immediate reconstructions so our options are you know skin sparing and full sparing mastectomy uh skin sparing mastectomy whole of the skin envelope is spared and nipple areola breast tissue and the tumor it, it just taken out and then reconstruction is done immediately uh, breast is basically you know the skin fat glandular tissue so you just have to replace the uh, fat and the glandular tissue and so this is the circum areolar uh, mastectomy and this is wide pattern mastectomy to go in the nipple uh, this is again nipple preserving nipple sparing mastectomy where the approach was from inferior uh, and the whole breast was taken out and the flap was uh, put in Similarly, you can use, you know, radial incisions and do the mastectomy. It is basically the surgeon's choice and uh, uh, plastic surgeons, you know, combined. So it's a team uh, game. Uh, breast reconstruction versus mastectomy. The scenario is that in USA, you know, 40% of the patients uh, they go for reconstruction. In UK, we are touching 30%. It's 28 to 30%. Uh, in India, uh, I'm not sure, you know, what the figures are. I don't know from where I got this three to four percent figure. Uh, I think even that figure is a, a very high figure. Uh, so uh, that that's the scene. Uh, SX, where I'm working, uh, the immediate breast reconstruction offer and uptake rate it is very very high. You know, uh, this slide it shows. Uh, uh, the uptake rate, rate in the whole of the English cancer network in all the counties, and on the top, uh, that is the SX, and you can see that you know, up to 80% of the patients uh, we offer reconstruction, and the reconstruction take is about 40%, which is the highest. You know, and there are other counties you can see. There are counties where where you know the offer rate is low, where the take rate is low, but on an average, it is up to 30% uh, take. And the reason for uh, that, I think we have a, a very good counseling of the patients. And for that, uh, uh, I will give credit to the BRA groups. So we have got breast reconstruction awareness group, uh, which is which is formed, you know, uh, locally by ourselves, uh, which is run by the uh, breast care nurses. And those nurses, they are the first point of contact. Uh, they give all the information to the patient after the consultation with the surgeon. They show before and after pictures, and they are available to answer all sort of questions. So they are the link between the patient and the uh, uh, you know the the consultant. And uh, what they do, they organize meetings as well. You know, biweekly they organize meeting and they invite the patients who have had reconstruction. So and then they uh, you know establish communication between the patient and those who have had surgery. So they form the first hand they give first hand information to the uh, patient and they can they can call them any time and any number of times so that way uh, there is a good link between the uh, operated patients who have got the results they are they are really willing to show their results as well in the clinic so that is probably the the, the way forward if we have that kind of you know organization with all the uh, best uh, oncoplastic uh, you know uh, clinics uh the demand for breast reconstruction we are seeing a steady increase in the uh, uh, demand and so much so that demand for autologous reconstruction has outstripped the resources in the uk today 
we are really really struggling you know in terms of resources in terms of theater capacity in terms of uh, available surgeons so autologous reconstruction it is very very much in demand and i think we give credit uh, to the breast screening programs and we have got the nice guideline uh, i'll i'll come to uh, that uh, in the later part of the presentation and there is increased patient information and expectation uh, resources are of course you know uh, there are increased resources techniques are advanced and there is there are advances in the oncogenetics so our number of risk reducing mastectomy is going very very high uh, so that that's how you know these are the all, all, these are the points you know uh, uh, which are uh, which are causing a steadily uh, increase in the reconstruction demand and now the reconstruction you can do immediate reconstruction which is primary reconstruction and it has got the psychological advantage because the uh, the lady go for mastectomy and uh, she goes to the theater with the breast she come out out of the theater with the breast she doesn't spend even a single day uh, without breast so it has really really positive psychological advantage and of course if you are doing skin sparing and nipple sparing uh, uh, mastectomy then the the reconstruction the cosmesis is also superior because your skin envelope is present and from the fold is present and it gives the natural shape so that is a better way to you know convince the uh, patients to go for the uh, immediate reconstruction uh, delayed or the secondary reconstruction of course you know uh, if uh, uh, the woman want you know time to recover uh, uh, then uh, we give them the time if they have they have to go for radiotherapy chemotherapy Uh, then it it becomes too much to take you know at in, in a single stage so then you do uh, mastectomy and then they come for the secondary uh, reconstruction uh most of the secondary reconstruction you know the uh, the mastectomies are simple mastectomies so you lose skin envelope you lose the inner memory fold so eventually the cosmesis is not that great but in this picture which i'm showing you right it's a reasonable uh, cosmetic out- outcome uh these are all you know uh, mastectomies who come for delayed re- uh, delayed reconstruction so in the examination you know you see that uh, there are radiotherapy changes there are extra uh, that fold of the skin uh, the the orientation of the scar so if you are doing the reconstruction in the delayed setup then you have to consider all those things you know the, the, the scar and quality of the skin uh, that might even alter your uh, uh, modalities of uh, uh, reconstruction and of course you know till that time they have to use uh, uh, which is again uh, sort of a management now as a surgeon uh, the reconstructive need as i said you know uh, what you need is uh, uh, if you have got the simple mastectomy then you need the skin envelope you need the plan uh, you need the fat so you need the breast parenchyma and at the end you have to uh, reconstruct the nipple and areola so that's what we have to keep in in, in mind when we are uh, thinking about the reconstructive uh, options and the options are uh, using own tissue which is uh, autologous tissue in the form of the flaps which could be local flaps pedicle flaps uh, free flaps and the other tool is the implant and the third one which is now emerging is along with these two you know the autologous tissue and the implants you can use the pad so this is the hybrid mode so which 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 is you know very very you know uh, upcoming in the field of reconstruction uh implant based reconstruction because you will need a skin envelope so it can be two stage reconstruction or it can it can be direct implant or the one stage reconstruction uh, but again it depends on the uh, what you get you know what kind of scar you get what kind of the uh, skin you get uh for one stage reconstruction now silicone implants are uh, used there was time when we used to imp- we use the saline implants uh, in uk saline implants are no more used It's just in the us they use saline implants and these implants they are either you know smooth implant or textured implant they come in different sizes depending on the width and length of the uh, implant they come as the shaped implants or they come as the round implants and <coughs> then for creating the skin envelope uh, we use the breast expanders uh, there are two type of expanders uh, one expander they have got the integrated uh, port so this is basically a bag of silicon and uh, then this is the port with the uh, magnetic you know uh, base and uh, these 
and these seeds and plants they are put under the uh, uh, skin which is the flat skin and then they are inserted uh, uh, gradually so uh, these are the magnetic poles and they lie under the skin so through the skin you just inject the uh, saline uh, uh, severely gradually and these poles under the skin they are located by these uh, magnetic uh, devices and uh, in three to four months you know you can achieve the uh, Skin envelope uh, and the expansion, and then you can replace it with the cultivated plant. Uh, you have to decide whether you want to use the uh, rounded plant or you want to use the shaped plant, smooth top. Uh, again, it depends. You know what are the availability of the plants and the cost of the plant. And the other kind of uh, expanders are Baker expanders. So they are uh, double lumen expanders. Uh, in which you know the outer lumen uh, that has got some silicon uh, filled in, and the inner lumen is uh, just empty, which can be filled in with the saline. They have got the pores, you know, a tube uh, with the pores wall, uh, so which is put under the skin subcutaneously, and uh, then you gradually fill them. So there is already you know about one per one fourth of the volume is already there, and then you fill rest of the tissue. These implants they again come as they for twenty five. Uh, which is the uh, round implant, Baker 35 is the shaped implant, and Baker 50. And the 25, 35, 50, it is the ratio of the uh, silicon gel and the uh, fluid, the language. And once these implants are filled in, if you are happy with the uh, size and shape of the press, you can simply keep the implant there and just pull out those uh, you know, the, the tubes and the port. And you don't have to change those implants. That was the whole idea. Uh, but breast implant surgery, you know, the implants uh, uh, do not change, whereas the breast change with the time. So, you know, there is ptosis, there is a volume difference. The implants always need some kind of, uh, uh, you know, repeated surgery or the maintenance surgery. Uh, all the implant-based reconstructions, they can have different complications. So you can see, you know, these are the common complications which are capsule contractures. Uh, their implant is you know, uh, pointing on the side. The implant is exposed if the skin is thin. So implants uh, always have problems. Although they give good, you know, immediate uh, uh, results, but that in the long run uh, uh, you face all these problems. Uh, now, nowadays we are using, you know, uh, dermal playing or the skin substitutes, what we call as a cellular dermal matrix, uh, to cover the implant if the skin is thin. So that gives extra protective, you know, uh, layer. But then all these uh, ADMs, they are really, really uh, expensive. And I don't know that in uh, our regular Indian setups, you know, these are advisable. And these ADMs, they are, uh, 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 you know, porcelain or bovine uh, you know, a cellular uh, skin. And there are few names which are available, which is Bracton, Sergiman, Mesomax, Exoplex. Uh, of course, you know, uh, in our unit, we are using these products and uh, we found them quite useful. Uh, I will not go into the details. And implant and radiotherapy, uh, they don't go uh, really well together. You know, you've got all sorts of problems. So if you see this patient, this, this is implant based reconstruction and followed by radiotherapy, which has shrunk everything and kind of, you know, caused all sorts of uh, skin changes. So it's kind of a failed reconstruction. Now we come to the autologous reconstruction, which is uh, uh, the gold standard now all over the world uh, in breast reconstruction. And the most common site is the uh, lower abdomen. Uh, and in this age groups, you know, most of uh, our patients, they have pretty uh, reasonable amount of uh, tissue. Uh, I'm sorry, you know, I'm not offending anyone, uh, but then uh, that's the observation. So uh, uh, this is this kind of reconstruction is uh, very much in uh, a demand. So it is our goal. And then there, there are other areas from where we can always take the skin uh, fat and the fat is another area. Uh, we can take tissue from the uh, buttocks. So we can take from the upper buttock, uh, lower buttock there. We can take tissue from the inner thighs. We can take tissue from the outer thighs. Uh, now this this one, this is a transverse orientation. We can have, you know, a vertical orientation of uh, uh, this. And uh, these are all sort of perforator-based flaps, 
uh, where there is there are definite you know artery and vein which are coming from the uh, main system so all this chunk of the tissue can be harvested with the underlying uh, vessel and it can be transferred to the uh, chest wall uh, so now this is very interesting you know uh, i just took this uh, a picture in one of the uh, country parks and it's a monolith and just look at the imagination of the artist you know he had just created the breast on the part so anteriorly posteriorly on the uh, uh, gluteal region on the thigh region and i just clicked it and i'm using this picture and i think the significance is uh, in in one word we can say that there are there are lots of uh, uh, donor areas from where we can reconstruct the uh, breast i don't want to say that you know there are breasts available in this but i i just incidentally i found this monolith and uh, i just show it you know so looking at this lady uh, she is suitable for all type of plaps uh, it's only the patient's choice and surgeon's expertise to decide what flap uh, he wants to use or where does he want to take the tissue from she is a good candidate from the for the autologous reconstruction and she represents the group of the patients the advantage of autologous reconstruction is uh, that it gives a uh, natural uh, mobility and feel to the uh, tissue it changes with the weight shift ages with the other side of the breast and all the subtle corrections uh, in the uh, you know the shape and volume can be done uh, by doing liposuction and lipofilling because it's, it's all skin and uh, fat uh there are times when you can't use the own tissue uh, clearly in the old days uh, there are cardiovascular problem morbidity obesity smoking psychosocial issues uh but at the end of the day it's all about patient choice and the surgeon's experience uh, what he can offer talking about the back flap uh, let dot fly flap it was it was very popular uh, uh, sort of reconstruction in 70s and let dot fly muscle it's, it's a large flat muscle on the back you can simply uh, swing this muscle uh detaching it uh, you know attachment on the back and uh, go down in the eyelid the whole muscle with or without the skin itself can be swung anteriorly uh if there is not enough volume you can put an implant and and move the muscle and cover the uh, implant you can use the autologous flat door side flap uh, where you don't need implant uh because on an average on the back you know in the lean back you can you, you can cut up to 300 to 400 gram of the tissue in the moderate kind of you know back uh, you can get up to 800 gram of the tissue and in the plump back you can get up to uh, 1200 grams of the uh, tissue so uh this is called autologous flat door size where what we do we take fat every bit of fat in this So this is the skin ellipse so we take fat from under the skin ellipse we take fat on the lat dorsi muscle we take fat superiorly in the para scapular area anteriorly and inferiorly in the iliac area so all that fat can be taken along with the lat dorsi muscle and that gives you huge volume and these are huge steps you know uh, the dissection is uh, a surprise carpal You keep scar a thin layer of the scar on the fat and keep a reasonable thickness of the skin flap. And you can see that this is what you can harvest from the back you know, along with the skin and the muscle. And then you can just just bring it and give it to the funnel. And uh, this is how you know the skin is there in the section. You can see the structure of the whole breast and the dorsal and skin. some results you know this lady uh, a patient of mine she had abdominoplasty already so uh, we are not in a position to use the abdominal tissue uh, as, as as a flap so in that case what we did uh, we took autologous lat dorsi and you can see uh, what we could achieve you know, a pretty reasonable amount of uh, tissue we can uh, bring in and this is finally after 2 years she had the uh, uh, nipple reconstruction and aerial tattoo nipple reconstruction i've done it with the nipple chair just shared uh, half of the nipple on the other side there and the areola was tattoo 
so uh, you can get pretty, pretty reasonable uh, outcome with the uh, that dorsi and fat and the scars are very uh, favorable you know they are along the line of relaxed contention and uh, they can be hidden in the uh, uh, strips so let dorsi is, is, is still it is a, a you know a choice of reconstruction uh, if you are not doing microsurgical reconstruction and even bilateral uh, breast reconstruction can be done by autologous uh, red dot size in this lady we got uh, a reasonable uh, size of the breast reconstruction <coughs> uh, now coming to our gold standard the abdominal flap it's basically the use, use of the central uh, abacity uh, and which <laughs> we can see even in our in our old discussion that there is the para umbilical you know uh, tissue there is always para umbilical bulge and which is enough to give a reasonable size of the uh, breast and the flap is called the flap uh, deep inferior epigastric uh, artery perforated flap so it is based on what happens that uh, around the belly button we have got lots of perforators arising from the deep inferior epigastric uh, vessel so we take the lips of the skin fat <laughs> leave the <coughs> rectus sheath and the muscle and uh, we simply when we identify the uh, uh, perforators and trace them down through the sheath uh, into the abdomen and look at the deep inferior epigastric vessels and for that <coughs> sorry <coughs> pre operative if we do the doppler mapping or <coughs> ct angiogram that gives us the a good you know a uh, a uh, uh, mapping about the available perforator and that tells us that uh, which perforator is a dominant perforator what is their arborization in the subcutaneous tissue whether they are crossing the midline out of available three four uh, perforators you can choose the uh, dominant perforator <coughs> and ct angio uh, that gives you the course of the uh, vessel you know intramuscular course Uh, then it gives you the branching pattern inside the uh, tummy as well, uh, and it shows you right up to uh, uh, the external iliac vessel where the uh, deep inferior epigastric vessel is coming. So before you start your operation, you know you have got the road map uh, ready, and uh, if you have that handy, then you save about you know 30 to 45 minutes uh, uh, operative time. So you. just identify the perforator bang dissect that go down you know that you are not facing any problem there is straight vessels underneath so uh, it is a very important tool but if it is not available then you know the simple uh, doppler ultrasound can be uh, a guide uh, abdominal ellipse you know the lower abdominal ellipse uh, the width of the ellipse you choose just by you know a pinch test and normally what happens this distance from belly button to the hairline is equal to the uh, width of the breast so when you raise the flap if you got enough tissue then even hemi dip you know just half of the lower abdominal tissue that is enough for uh, your breast reconstruction you just swing it you know 90 degree and that gives you the width of the breast and then uh, the upper part of the breast uh, that is just triangular so i'll show you how we uh, line the breast uh this is the <coughs> perforator you know when you there is the skin and fat uh, that's what you see you see the dominant perforator you can see both artery and vein and you can see the pulsations of the uh, perforator so if you see pulsation then you can you can decide that this is probably the uh, best perforator and if it is located in the center of the flap uh if there are two perforator in the same line uh, then we take uh, two perforator just to increase the uh, perfusion of the flap and this is the intramuscular dissection of the perforator you simply split the muscle uh, and you are right on to the deep inferior epigastric vessel in the uh, abdomen and this is you go down to the pelvis uh, take all the sheath and fat uh, around the vessel and uh, just go right down to where the vessel is uh, coming and then detach the vessel and that way and then superiorly also you know here uh, you just have to ligate the vessel in that case you have got the whole abdominal skin free uh, with the blood vessel it, it just looks like umbrella you know the uh, the umbrella and then it 
stock, which is the uh, blood vessel. And then uh, the abdomen, uh, you just close it with, you know, uh, we always put a small uh, vipro mesh for uh, extra strength, and then the sheath is closed. Uh, and uh, the upper abdominal skin, it is undermined, pulled down, and you give a nice uh, abdominoplasty or tummy tuck, uh, which is kind of a bonus to these patients, you know, at the end of the tunnel, there is some ray, you know. So uh, that gives of cosmosis and you get a breast. Uh, <coughs> once the flap is taken off, <coughs> you prepare, you know, you recreate the, the defect on the breast and shape the flap uh, by coning. And the blood vessels, uh, you anastomose the blood vessels either to the internal memory vessels so uh, in between the vessel, you just take out a small piece of rib and expose the vessel internal memory. Or now, you know, in our unit, uh, we don't even take out the ribs. Uh, we just look for the internal memory perforator. So second or third intercostal perforator, they are strong enough. And uh, we just anastomose the flap to the intercostal perforator. And the other side for uh, anastomosis is, is in the axilla. If we are doing axillary dissection, and the whole area is available there, and uh, we have got the subscapular access, we have got the uh, vessels, and there are plenty of vessels there, so, you know, you can spare. <coughs> so, these are the two, you know, common sites for anastomosis. And once the artery and vein are connected, uh, the blood starts, you know, flowing in and out, and your abdominal tissue is uh, breast tissue. You simply need to shape it. Uh, this is basically a microsurgical procedure uh, which needs two teams and, uh, of course, the microsurgical uh, expertise. But still, say in champs, but we are doing about 350 uh, free flap breast reconstructions in a year. And <clears throat> I remember when I started in the unit, we used to take eight to nine hours to do DF flap. Now we are doing uh, DF uh, in just under four hours' time. So it's all uh, uh, about, you know, uh, teamwork. So this procedure is, uh, of course, done under general aesthetic. It takes four to five hours. The hospital stays five to six days, and recovery time is five to six weeks. And <coughs> here you can say this lady had delayed yes. She has got a smaller breast, uh, but uh, a, a reasonable result. We can use it in the moderate size breast, where you can see that uh, we have achieved a good, good, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, ptosis, which is the uh, the important, you know, aspect of the breast. Abdominoplasty scars, uh, belly button relocation. This is rather bigger breast we have reconstructed uh, with the DF lab and got a natural looking large breast. Uh, this lady, <coughs> she's 70 plus, and she underwent, you know, uh, immediate reconstruction, uh, which was followed by the nipple reconstruction and nipple areola reconstruction. And I'm sure you will agree that this is a fantastic reconstruction, even at this age. And this lady take it pride in that I have got the reconstruction. Uh, in ladies, you can still get good, good ptosis and uh, abdominoplasty. You know, even abdominoplasty, the scar is not much visible. Uh, this is a nipple sparing mastectomy. You, you can see the breast pocket, you know. It's just what I have done. Uh, we have done mastectomy to the radial incision. So nipple areola is preserved. Mastectomy is done from there. The flap is put in. And uh, anastomosis, then we can see just there is a small skin pedal which we kept for monitoring. But the contour is beautifully maintained. And of course, the abdominoplasty and belly button. Uh, that's what a woman aspires for. Uh, <coughs> bilateral cancers, uh, we have done uh, their flap reconstruction because this lady, uh, she had enough you know, for two breasts. And see, there is a, a good amount of, you know, good pulses. Uh, prophylactic risk reducing mastectomy is also uh, we do bilateral reconstruction uh, immediately. Uh, this work is increasing, uh, you know, uh, and then uh, from our unit, uh, we we kind of reached to a conclusion that this whole procedure uh, of reconstruction with the DF flap it has got 100 steps, right from arrival in the theater to when patients leave the theater. And if you want to have efficiency, then what you have to do, you have to divide the procedure, whole procedure into small, small steps and then master it, uh, looking at the efficiency in terms of the time and quality of outcome. So that's what we have done and we have published it, uh, which has been, you know, appreciated uh, all over. And that was probably the best way to reduce the uh, time.
uh, now what happens, you know, if you have tummies like this, uh, you know, you've got a scar, there's nothing uh, much on the tummy, absolute skinny patient, uh, midline scars, uh, or the patient has got abdominal capacity already or liposuction, then we have to look for other sources other than the uh, abdomen. And those sources, as I said, uh, we use the thigh, the medial thigh. And the uh, flap we call is uh, uh, transverse uh, myocutaneous gracilis flap. And again, this is the, the second flap, alternative flap, which we use in our, uh, uh, you know. And it is, uh, it is strange that the ladies who do not have uh, fat on the tummy, we find enough fat on the uh, thighs and the buttocks. So this is our second flap, uh, which we use. And we have kind of, you know, we didn't invent this flap, but then we refined it and our number uh, outnumbered the uh, uh, flaps of the person who described the flaps. So we refined and we pu published this flap. And you can see that this, this is a thin, skinny lady and we have done both uh, breast reconstruction using uh, a skin ellipse from the inner thigh. And uh, this scar is like this, which is pretty obvious, but uh, it is in the uh, bikini line. And the same flap can be used in the web vertical orientation as well. You know, you can take the whole of the medium thigh skin uh, uh, in the vertical uh, and give the vertical scar. And the other flap is uh, <coughs> uh, profunda humerus artery, you know, perforator flap. So that is again a thigh flap in the same region. Uh, so this is, reconstruction is done by the PAP flap, which is the uh, profunda perforator flap. And uh, if there is not enough on one side, then even you take the flaps from both sides. And two flaps have been uh, put to reconstruct the uh, breast. Buttocks, again, upper buttock, lower buttock, that can be used for reconstruction. We call upper buttock as superior gluteal artery uh, perforator flap. Uh, so it is good for, you know, a small to moderate size of the breast. Uh, this is inferior gluteal artery perforator flap from the lower buttock. So you can see the scar, the scar is somewhere there, but then still we could get a breast from the lower buttock. Uh, from the back, uh, these uh, love handles and, and the lumbar area, uh, you get enough tissue. And the flap is based on the lumbar artery uh, perforator. And you get good quality of uh, fat and good amount of fat. So in this lady, you can see she has got a uh, reasonable size cortic breast which has been uh, reconstructed, uh, taking the fat from there. And this is the scar which can easily be hidden. So that is our uh, third choice. The only disadvantage is the, the pedicle length, pedicle is very small just get two or three centimeter length. So you have to take the vein graft or the artery graft and then <clears throat> put an interposition graft uh, to make your anastomosis. Partial breast reconstruction, <coughs> although we don't do much, uh, but of course there are plenty of flaps, now, you know, intercostal artery, perforator flaps, you know, anterior intercostal, lateral intercostal, then you have got the lateral thoracic artery perforator flap mini LD, uh, LD, autologous LD, so they are all, they can be used for the partial reconstruction. I don't have, you know, uh, different cases and slides for that. And so that's not, you know, my area of expertise. Uh, then chest wall reconstruction, because I think in our scenario, most of the times, you know, we are doing chest wall reconstruction. We take out everything and you just have a chest wall defect. So, so the app is again, you know, workhorse for that. Uh, you can take the whole of the ellipse of the uh, lower abdominal tissue. You can see the uh, uh, size of the defect. The whole of lower abdominal tissue was used. And uh, although you can, cannot give a breath, but you know you can resurface the uh, chest. <coughs> there are some good local flaps, you know, like laterally based uh, thoraco abdominal flap. Very big defect. And uh, uh, you just base laterally whole of the abdominal tissue. Uh, right up to the belly button, even below, can be lifted up. Uh, it, it looks grotesque, but uh, uh, it serves the purpose. And it's simple. Uh, you can do this flap in a half an hour's time, uh, and you only get this scar, which, which is, you know, uh, right from there to there. So you can use medially based uh, thoracic abdominal flap. So just base it on the uh, paraumbilical perforator or superior epigastric perforator. 
literally you can go as far as you want to and just have your arc of rotation and the whole of the tissue is used and you use the abdominal tissue which is black so you don't have to put any graft or anything you can close it directly uh and then uh we have started using a big v2 y abdominal uh, flap you know uh, for the chest wall uh, defects because there are lots of you know perforators on the anterior uh, abdominal wall so uh, see this is an elderly lady which was uh, who was really really unfit wanted a quick surgery uh, and it is inflammatory uh, uh, carcinoma so uh, whole of the uh, upper abdominal uh, tissue we just lifted and raised it as the uh, uh, v2 y advancement and this is after 6 months this is another patient you know she had got the uh, uh, implant and then cancer and everything exposed so a big v2 y advancement flap what you have to do even you don't have to see the perforator basically divide this skin into three uh, different parts so the proximal distal and middle part so you undermine the proximal you undermine the distal and bit of <laughs> lateral part you will still have plenty of perforators here just keep that attached and uh, you, you can just pull it up and close it uh coming to the fat grafting uh we don't do total reconstruction with fat graft uh, but then with the other abdominal flap or the flap reconstruction if you are not happy with the reconstruction there are volume deficiency then you can do lipo filling later on uh, which will restore the uh, contour so you can use it as the subtle correction and thank you thank you and all this this kind of deformities they can be treated simply by fat grafting you can see the result you know the contour has been uh, corrected nicely uh, so amongst all the three modalities the flaps flaps are cheaper they are got they are permanent solutions the results are natural uh, scars are not that bad and the flaps although they look worse on the first day but then as the time goes uh, they improve and they give good results whereas the implant they look their best on the day of operation but as the time goes you know your all the uh, problems you know uh, you start encountering so the implant reconstructions uh, they are short procedures they are easy procedures uh, but then they they have very operative complications they have long term age related you know in stability and lipo filling you can do in the selected cases because now there are units who are reconstructing total breast with the lipo filling and in 3 to 4 you know uh, uh, settings uh, you need secondary corrections you know in this patient she had uh, uh, implant led or side reconstruction so left breast reconstruction done and then the right breast was reduced to uh, symmetrized and in the end the final stage of breast reconstruction is nipple reconstruction which is just like you know cherry on the uh, cake it gives that kind of effect and the overall satisfaction in the patient is very high in, in those who have got the uh, nipple reconstruction uh, you can simply use prosthetic nipples if you don't want to use any flaps uh, you can do nipple share if the other nipple is of reasonable size you can just take half of that and use it as a, a complete scar and that is probably the best outcome and that's my preferred uh, modality for nipple reconstruction areola you can simply do uh, tattooing uh, you can create some uh, flaps what we call cb flaps in the reconstructed breast and that gives you uh, something which looks like the nipple uh, and that can be uh, you see this is uh, one of my dear flap and then uh, uh, the nipple reconstruction was uh, done by nipple shear and then nipple areola tattooing this is a beautiful outcome uh, which we can achieve <clears throat> there are some reconstructed patients you know uh, what their feelings are what they feel so one of the patient says that i was left with almost a crater in my left chest area trying to fit a prosthetic breast was very unsuccessful and uncomfortable i suffered for the next 2 years with severe bouts of self pain and this is not a new story i am sure you know in our population our patient they must be having the same you know uh, feeling But then those who have had reconstruction what do they say i knew i wanted reconstruction and i wanted it done immediately i'm so glad i did it i've got a breast made of living tissue with a nipple made by taking half of the remaining one and i feel normal uh, 
one more interview even at my age femininity is very important and your breasts are a huge part of this now i'm completely so this was one of our uh, consultant what she did you know she invited all her uh, reconstructed patients and those who came some 30 of them they came and then she organized a photo session and a small interview i can't show you all those photographs but then she came out with a booklet and their comments it was a wonderful feeling uh, so <coughs> in uk we have got nice you know national institute of health and clinical excellence and they have got key recommendation and and then you know bapra british association of plastic surgeons association of breast surgeons so they kind of formulate the guidelines and we follow those and some you know points are that if detected early and treated timely the breast cancer is curable reconstruction is possible which is the standard fact and all patients undergoing a mastectomy immediate reconstruction should be discussed and offered if there is no comorbidity all appropriate options should be given to those patients and the medical and psychological benefits you know are obvious with the breast reconstruction and it offers the overall recovery from the cancer now indian women i don't know why they don't go for reconstruction uh, i'm sure prof sharma and uh, you know the young prof team they might be uh, able to shed some light uh Yonga Hospital is an independent hospital in uh, Coimbatore, and that unit they did some survey. You know, uh, they asked questions to uh, some 600 women, and uh, in that survey, their finding was that the women why they don't undergo breast reconstruction. They say they are not aware of it, not offered by the surgeon. Some says they don't want it. Some says they are not depressed, having no breast. fine we are okay and most of them they say there is no family support and so probably in that cell these might be the reasons uh, uh, we don't have that much breast reconstruction so how we can increase the reconstruction of their mass in the one cell firstly a woman has to recognize that it's her right to have breast and the strategies are we need to create a value for the breast create a mindset in the woman in the society that when you remove it it has to be replaced and the reconstructed breast it looks like breast it feel like breast and once we have got good number of reconstruction we can start with something like you know the the broad look where they can uh, communicate and get first So, in conclusion, uh, there is need for the awareness program. I just think that social media is very, very powerful these days. So, uh, that is the best way. Most favored reconstruction is immediate autologous reconstruction. Probably reducing the cost of surgery will increase the number. Uh, this time, I heard that we have got you know lots of schemes, you know, Bamasha and all that. and uh, i was just talking when i was uh, coming to this place that in 60000 rupees we can do the construction which is a fantastic news you know uh, we, we can exploit that fact and we can offer uh, that reconstruction to all the you know uh, mastectomy patients or uh, delayed reconstruction i think we should capitalize that we must capitalize that once you have done 100 reconstruction then the women will come uh, themselves you know they will ask for uh, reconstruction so that is probably the best way the woman has to come forward and say that i want reconstruction that's the only way whatever you push it unless it comes from them it's not going to happen uh, and then of course you know you have to uh, uh, train and educate the doctors uh, those who have willingness for that uh, i'm sure few of you know that you know we have started brasa and braskon uh, we do annual meetings where uh, we organize you know the workshops and lectures so that work we are doing you know we are uh, we are training and teaching the doctors uh, but then you know the woman herself society state has to take the responsibility because it's it's the society's work so that was about breast reconstruction i'll just give you a few more you know uh, scenarios where we as a plastic surgeon can help the women out 
uh, breast hyperplasia, hyperplasia, you know, uh, there are women with small breasts which are not in a blown hypoplasty. Simple breast augmentation is the uh, solution uh, which we are doing very commonly in the uh, UK. And of course, there are changes in the breast after childbirth, which is mainly the ptosis, quality of the skin, which simply need, you know, uplift. Just the position of the nipple need to be lifted, what we call as mastoplasty. That makes enormous change in the uh, life. So you can see the mastopexy, you know, the results, uh, the first pictures are the atotic breast, optic, and they are nice and perfect. Uh, <clears throat> then there is a group of congenital developmental asymmetries of the breast. So these, this group, all these ladies, they have got underdeveloped uh, breasts. Uh, if we divide breast into the quadrants, then, you know, some of them, they have got lower quadrant, lower medial, lower lateral, or whole of the circumferential uh, development, which is not happening. Uh, that's where a plastic surgeon can help. Uh, this is the severest form of the, you know, developmental asymmetry, what we call as tubular breast. Uh, we can correct that. Uh, there are a group of uh, patients who have got the inverted nipple and they are not worried about it, or if they are worried, they are not coming forward. And that can be corrected by a very simple procedure. Uh, then, this is group of ladies, you know, we encountered on day-to-day -day basis. Uh, they are all normal breasts. They are not abnormal, but then they are not uncomfortable. All these ladies, they suffer with the, you know, uh, uh, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, dry straps digging, and even uh, they have got uh, uh, eczema and excessive sweating in the folds, and uh, we can achieve this. You know, the large scotic breast they can be reduced by simple breast reduction procedure to get reasonable, manageable size of the breast. So, thank you very much for.